Bring Back Rock. Hey, it's Dean, and welcome to Bring Back Rock. It's Halloween time, so what better band to talk about than Wasp? I originally was going to do Wasp's 10 best albums, but I decided to make it a little harder on myself and pick the great eight, eight great Wasp albums. They have 16 studio albums. The first one was pretty easy to eliminate. Their last album they released was re Idolized, which is a re-recording of the Crimson Idol. I just decided to stick with the original and see if that makes the list. Cool that we have actually a top 10 or top 20 Wasp records we can do because they've released albums fairly consistently over the years. Unlike some of the other bands, even ones that started out early like Rat and Motley Crue, I think they both have nine. So it's pretty cool that uh, Wasp has 16 records to choose from. Um, first rule, no best ofs, no live albums. If live albums were allowed, Live in the Raw would be at or near the top. I'm not a big live album guy, but I grab four or five of them that I play consistently, and Live in the Raw is probably the one I reach for the most. Um, also, while listening to some of these records again to make this list, um, I thought I'd better do a top 20 Wasp songs at some point, because there are a lot of great tunes on there. And so that's probably a video that will be coming four or five down the road, I'm guessing. So, at the end of the video, I also want to talk about a couple albums that didn't make the list, but right now let's get to it. Eight great Wasp albums. At number eight, we have Dominator. Dominator came out in 2007. It was only released as an import, not available here in the U.S. It's a fairly short album, only has nine songs, and one of them is a reprise of an earlier song. Standout tracks for me are the opening song, Mercy, and Heaven's Hung in Black. If you like classic Wasp sound, check out Dominator. At number seven, we have the follow-up to The Crimson Idol, Still Not Black Enough. Originally, The Crimson Idol was going to be a Blackie Lawless solo album. Then this was going to be a Blackie Lawless solo album, but they both became Wasp releases. It was released in 1995 in Japan. It took about six months later, it came out in Europe. And about a year after that, it finally came out in the U.S. I got it as an import, and my track listing is different than the U.S. release. Some standout tracks here are a cover of Jefferson Airplane, Somebody to Love, Goodbye America, and my personal favorite off the album, Rock and Roll to Death. Number six, I know this is a lot of people's favorite Wasp album, is The Crimson Idol, originally a Blackie Lola solo album. It features Bob Kulik on lead guitar and Frankie Benali on drums. Doug Aldrich also plays on a song on the album. My personal favorites on here are Chainsaw Charlie, Murders in the New Morgue, and Hold On to My Heart, which I think if it was released a couple years earlier would have been a huge, huge hit. Moving on to the top five. At number five, we have The Headless Children, which was Wasp's highest charting position record. It had the hits Forever Free and The Real Me, which was a Who cover. My favorite was Mean Man, which was a song about Chris Holmes. And Lita Ford did background vocals on Thunderhead. The Headless Children was also the first in a string of albums that the late, great Frankie Benali played on for Wasp. On 
on to number four. Now, after the release of the industrial-styled KFD album and some fan backlash, Wasp went back to basics, back to where they came from, and released an album musically that could fit right in with The Last Command or Inside the Electric Circus. Sometimes juvenile, often vulgar, but a fun listen. And Chris Holmes back playing the style we love to hear him play. At number four, Hell Dorado. We go from 1999's Hell Dorado all the way back to the beginning. Wasp's debut album in 1984 comes in at number three. An interesting thing about this album, the first half was recorded with the U.S. audience in mind. Songs like I Want to Be Somebody and Love Machine, School Days. The second half was recorded with the European audience in mind. Darker, heavier, Hellion, Sleeping in the Fire, Tormentor, On Your Knees, songs like that. Both sides are great. And that puts Wasp's debut album at number three. At number two, we have Inside the Electric Circus, released in 1986. It was the first album that Blackie Lawless was able to go back to playing guitar and Johnny Rod joined the band on bass. The Big Welcome and Inside the Electric Circus are such a great way to open the album. The single Nine Five Nasty was cool. So many deep tracks on this album that I really enjoy. I had to put it up here. Number two, Inside the Electric Circus. Let's see what's at number one. Probably figured it out. Probably not a big surprise. The Last Command, released in 1985. Wasp's sophomore record. It was also their most popular record. It spawned the hits and videos for Wild Child and Blind in Texas. It's hard to believe how productive they were at this time. They released three albums in three years, and they came in as my top three favorite Wasp records. Now, Wasp is currently touring the U.S. in 2022 for the first time in forever. They have a new album about to come out, and Blackie Lawless is putting the finishing touches on his autobiography, so there's a lot of stuff to look to forward to for Wasp. All right, so that's it. That's my great eight Wasp albums. Feel free to share yours. Let's go through them once more real quick. Dominator at eight. Still Not Black Enough at seven. The Crimson Idol at six. Headless Children at 5, Hell Dorado at 4, Wasp's debut album at 3, Inside the Electric Circus at 2, and at number 1, The Last Command. All right, so that's it. Eight great Wasp records. Think about it. Eliminate half of them. Tell me what I got wrong. Tell me what I got right. I wanted to mention that their last two albums, Golgotha and Babylon, when I was doing a top 10 both of those were going to make the list uh, and dominator their three albums ago did make the list so just goes to show you they're still releasing great music even today also want to mention kfd if you're not familiar with that album it's wasps basically industrial record um, there are a couple good songs on there like the title track and the song you it's just the letter u it's great if you're mad at uh your girlfriend wife significant other if you've gone through or going through a break or if you're just mad at the world Really good song. Have to see if that makes 
my top 20 when the Wasp Top 20 comes out. So I want to thank everybody for watching. Anybody that spends time with me on this channel, I really appreciate it. I appreciate you hitting that subscribe button. And thank you very much. We'll catch you on the next one.